Coming up in this FinCast, a fish for cichlid lovers that's peaceful, small, and colorful. An introduction to the Gymnogeophagus el Norte. Now they're already eating, so they can't be too stressed out from their trip. When I use Chemipure, I see results as far as clean tanks, uh, less water changes, um, reduced nutrients, uh, just an overall great product. And how long have you been using Chemipure? Uh, going on 10 years. Hi everybody, John here with another FinCast. I want to tell you about a fish that I've been keeping and absolutely loving. It's called the Gymnogeophagus el Norte. I want to share a little of its history with you, kind of show you what the fish looks like in my tannin tank, and we'll hear from a breeder of these fish in Florida who started out with just a few specimens and wound up with like a thousand of these fish. A thousand. We'll also look at the fish's habits in the aquarium and talk a little bit about breeding the fish, how to feed it, and how it gets along with others. Man, I am way, way, way overdue with this FinCast. This is the longest I've ever gone between posts, and if you've been following me regularly, I apologize for that. I have had a couple of health issues, had some holiday things, and then I've done a bit of traveling. In fact, I went on an African photo safari, and I got to tell you, it was amazing. If you ever get a chance to do a photo safari, you need to go because I'm guessing that if you love aquariums and fish, you also have that same gene that says giraffes, elephants, rhinos in the wild are cool too, all the bird life. We went to South Africa and I have to tell you, it was the trip of a lifetime. These are just some of the pictures that I took when I was there. No matter, I've got a lot to show you about the Gymnogeophagus el Norte and a lot to talk about with how to keep this fish. It hasn't been in the hobby very long. You may not have heard of it, but uh, I think this is a fish that you'll be interested in, especially if you like cichlids and you don't have maybe a lot of space in your aquarium or you're looking for that small, peaceful cichlid that seems to have eluded the hobby for a long time. My Gymnogeophagus. which are sub-adults, I believe. I bought a group of them at an aquarium show in Northern Virginia. Mike Cichlids was there. Mike is a fish farmer from Florida. He grows fish in ponds, vats, aquariums, and he sells to wholesalers, and he also sells direct to the public, which is a question I get a lot on my videos, and I'll put information on how to contact him in the description down below. Here's a bit more about Mike. My name is Mike Shimagala, and we have a fish farm in Florida named Mike Cichlids. We have 195 vats and four greenhouses and we have a 1400 square foot warehouse that has about 500 fish tanks in it. The first thing I asked him is why people would like this cichlid. Very, it's a very easy, peaceful uh, little fish. There's not, not a lot of whole care. Um, they're, they, they're very good parents. They don't eat their young. Several batches will live in the tank at the same time. Uh, it's really it's hard to describe because it has a nice uh, yellow side with a bright uh, red uh, fins and then a nice uh, sky blue color on the side of it. Uh, it's hard. It's, it's a stunning fish, very colorful, multicolored little fish. Again, we're talking about an earth eater, much like the larger geophagus group, which you may be familiar with, the downturned mouth, and they're always sifting through stuff in the bottom. It's kind of fun to watch. But this is a different group of fish. It's the gymnogeophagus, and this species, El Norte, as I mentioned a moment ago, hasn't been in the hobby very long, and there's not a lot of information about it. Gymnogeophagus, it's a, it's a very small, the males are about three inches, females are about two and a half inches. It came from Uruguay probably about four or five years ago. I found mine to be relatively peaceful, not the least aggressive with the other fish in the tank, including some rams, even a small pencil fish, uh, and they have not fought with one another. And Mike has seen the same thing. 
It's a very peaceful little fish. Um, could probably live even you know, with rams and doesn't get as big as an acara. Uh, so it's a very peaceful, nice, calm little fish for an aquarium. Could probably be a, a fish that could be a, a, in a 20 gallon tank and live quite happily. I put mine in the tannin tank that I've been operating in various forms for about two years now with stained water and botanicals mostly from South America, Central America, so it ought to appeal to the fish's natural uh, inclinations. And I found, as Mike does, that they're not fussy about what they eat. Um, we feed them a standard uh, farm pellet that we have made. For our, for our farm, and uh, it has about 40-42% protein. Uh, that no, no other uh, other uh, special feed is needed for him. Right now on our farm, we're running about 7.6 to 7.8 pH. Uh, the water temperature is between anywhere between 76 and 80, and it's seen to spawn right through the summer like that. When it comes to breeding, there's a bit of info online from people who really drill down on the breeding process, suggesting that water temperatures ought to mimic the fish's natural situation in Uruguay, which would mean cooler water, say around 70 or a bit cooler in the off season, so to speak, and then warmer in the summer months. But for Mike, they just breed pretty easily. Uh, it, it, it took me absolutely no effort. It happened by accident. <laughs> I wasn't even planning on doing it. I was planning on raising up some Alunacara peacocks that were in with it. And I just had a few, so I put them in there, and now I have a thousand fish with no effort. They, we, they do like a lot of water changes. The vats that we have on the farm receive 100% water change every day, so fresh water would probably be critical. Perhaps the best thing about this fish is that it plays well with others. It's hard to find a cichlid that is colorful, stays small, and won't eat all its tank mates, but this is one of those fish. I haven't personally kept them with tetras, but I do know that because they're such good parents that they'll have anywhere between, they're not eating their young at all, so I'm guessing that they would probably be good with other schooling fish like that. Again, in my tank, they showed no aggression towards the little pencil fish, which are the same size as, say, uh, guppies or neon tetras. So, obviously not an aggressive fish. Now, according to Mike, as you heard, this fish has only been around in the hobby for about five years, which is kind of like a hot minute in aquarium keeping terms. So, don't be surprised if you haven't heard of this fish. Don't be surprised if the local fish store doesn't have it. And honestly, I'll be surprised if you ever see it in a big box store. But again, you can get it direct from Mike. More information down below. No, we can, we can ship direct. or we, we, sell, we sell three levels. We sell box lot to wholesalers. We sell to independent pet stores. And we sell direct off our farm to your door. Uh, MikeSicklis.com has all the pricing information of everything we carry on the farm. So what do you think of the Gymnogeophagus El Norte? Let me know in the description down below. I'll be curious if you've kept it or now that you've seen the video, if it's something you're interested in keeping. But either way, I'd be interested in your comments. By the way, this is the second Gymnogeophagus species I've profiled here on FinCasters. The other is the equally beautiful Gymnogeophagus gymnogenes, which you might also want to look at. And I'll put a link to that video also with the description down below. Don't forget to look for FinCasters on all the socials, most importantly Instagram and Facebook. I'd appreciate it if you'd follow along. I post pretty regularly. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next FinCast.